Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan, and the market is very interesting. 75% of the projects in the top 100 by market cap are moving into the green. Algo, Matic, Quant, Arweave, Phantom, Harmony, Yearn, Finance. Those are some of the ones with some very significant gains. 2.3 trillion is the total market cap in size and Bitcoin dominance is strong at 44.76%. It is just been playing with this 55,000 all day long. We can see here that it is absolutely bullish with a score of 99.3 sitting right at the time that I'm recording this, which is 9.30 PM on, uh, on Japan standard time in Tokyo. 54,849. So it's kind of been playing on both sides of this 55,000. Yeah, really, really wanting to go towards that all time high of 65,315 that we saw on April 14th. From the 30th of September, it's been really having some significant gains. It's very, very fun. Now, why all of a sudden are we seeing these green candles? Well, JP, Morgan, an analyst, put out a report on Thursday, and they said that the institutional investors have an appetite for Bitcoin and crypto again. It is back on. And why? Well, they are seeking a better inflation hedge than gold. They don't believe gold, in their report, is where they should suggest putting the hedge money. And also the unofficial comment or official comment that came from the U.S. policymakers that said they they will take no steps uh, in taking the same kind of course or action that China has in the way of banning. Yeah, I wasn't so surprised on that, but that I guess had a big impact on a lot of people when it came to um, making it official, I guess, coming from Powell. Hmm. I don't know. But also the third reason is the adoption. We are just seeing a lot of adoption and the adoption ranges in uh, many, many parts of the world, uh, not just El Salvador adopting Bitcoin. However, there are some smaller nations making similar moves with steps towards making a policies to adopt Bitcoin as a national security or a national currency. But it's just the adoption overall is just becoming remarkable. Senator Cynthia Lummis, she filed on Thursday an update to her August filing, which she said was in error because she actually did buy more Bitcoin. In June, we knew that she had five Bitcoin, but I think she owns now a little bit more than that. She had uh, made her first Bitcoin purchase back in 2013 when it was just $330. And one interesting point to note is a up and coming possible new senator. This is Blake Masters. He's the president of Thiel Capital, which is founded by Peter Thiel. Hmm. He is the co-founder of PayPal and has a lot of other remarkable investments and uh, companies. But this Blake Masters is running for the U.S. Senate of the state of Arizona. He has one million in Bitcoin, and I'd be happy to see him win that seat. I don't care if he's Republican or Democrat. I think that we need to get some of these old guys who are not forward thinking and really behind the times like Shelby and Sherman. Uh, I welcome these new fresh guys any any time. I don't care what party they are part of. And Eleanor Terrett told us that in a few hours from now, there's going to be a special guest joining them on Twitter live at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to discuss the Ripple and SEC case and the XRP army now that it's 30,000 strong in getting a voice in the court it's going to be some someone that we are all interested in. I love the suspense. 
But I can tell you, and Eleanor did get contacted, that John Deaton sent out a tweet that that actually is now at 32,000. 32,000 people have joined in the support against the SEC's overreach. And it does not matter where you are from. Any XRP holder from anywhere in the world can join. And you can find that Google Doc on John's Twitter feed. It is at John Deaton one and it is uh, something that's very easy to fill out. I was going to show you what it looks like, but I filled out mine long ago. And as you can see, the message I got back was you can only fill this form out once. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, but I can't show you what it has on the form. And I did it so long ago. Uh, yeah, I just don't remember, but I'm one of those people who hate long forms and I don't have a memory of it being a long form at all. Uh, we have a new document that was filed on August 7th. This has been filed by the defense. It's opposing a request that the SEC made for a protective order. So in a nutshell, they, um, they don't want to respond to some documents, a review of five, five of just 1,700, <laughs> because they feel like it is unduly burdensome. Uh, it's just... It's it's just shocking because these are the very same documents or contracts that they allege are unlawful securities offerings. Now, here's the real shocking part. Not that they are trying to disgorge $1.38 billion. Actually, I find it shocking that they're going to just throw that back into the coffers of the SEC if they do indeed get it. But that is not what is so shocking. They haven't even bothered to read all of those documents and contracts that they claim are unlawful securities offerings. Unbelievable. So the six pages that were just recently filed here, again, puts Ripple on the high ground big time, big time. And the coverage of Gensler is turning out to be very sour in major media. This is the Financial Times, and they're pointing out the oversteps in the headlines that he's also under fire for his regulation with Representative Tom Emmer getting the spotlight. I think the lobbyist and the Chamber of Digital Commerce, they are getting a louder voice. Thank goodness for that. And the headlines like this one, where it says 101 million XRP moved by Ripple in part, some of it went to Hyobi. You need to know Hyobi is a global exchange. I mean, they even have an office here in Japan. So every time, every time XRP goes to Hyobi, it shouldn't be big news. They are really 100% global. What I think is big news is what goes on in the whale watch of the xrp.dev site. Yeah, it, that 101 million is kind of peanuts if you take a look here at what a lot of these whales do on a 24-hour basis. This is Bybit. They have the most amount of volume. They're a Singapore exchange with offices in Hong Kong and Taiwan. They are the big whale in the last 24 hours. 275 million XRP went to whale 1492. Whale 1492 is a wallet that was activated by Binance. Binance is a big whale in the space. And then the next one down, look at Ripple, 185 million. They sent to whale 649. Well, I can tell you that Whale 649 is a nubble, another Ripple wallet. And they are sending out to Bitso and Bitstamp. We've got 20 million and uh, going to Bitso and Bitstamp on the 8th and the 6th, re respectively. So you can, you know, this is, this is where the headlines should be. We've got Bitso and Bitstamp are the two big on-demand liquidity exchanges that facilitate the 
liquidity for the uh, cross-border remittances that uses the digital asset XRP as a bridge. That's the headline. <laughs> An XRPL hackathon, it started 211 participants. I'd love to see them build an AMM, a uh, automated market maker. As David said, that would be game changing. I so hope that they do this. The submissions are going to uh, be collected on the 13th, next Wednesday. And then the winner will be announced, actually winners will be announced on October 11th. First place gets 8,000 XRP, uh, $8,000 worth of XRP. Second place gets 5,000 US dollars uh, worth of XRP. And third place will receive 3,000 in XRP. There's a, some bonuses too. If you can use uh, hooks, which is uh, a form of uh, kind of a contract, a smart contract, if you can, if you can incorporate hooks in your uh, project that you submit, you can get a bonus, $2,000 of XRP. And also too, they're looking for the best use of an NFT. So there's a lot of good stuff coming out of these hackathons. Matt Hamilton will have the winner on his Twitch channel. So you can uh, follow up to see not only who won, but what the project is that won those prizes. All right, I'm jumping to the fluff, everyone. Do you remember I did this, this amazing technology that has uh, a LED screen at a very, very busy intersection in Shinjuku, which is a um, very busy part of Tokyo. It's installed on the roof of a four-story building and it just looks so real. I don't know if you remember this calico cat was walking and uh, meowing. You can see here that uh, it's very interesting technology in a 4K quality. That pedestrian crossing gets roughly 230,000 people crossing in a day. So it does get a lot of uh, a lot of eyes. And this is what I want to show you. Just on the 1st of October, they decided to bring the cat back in a new series of three different videos, or actually there's four different videos. There's a special version at the top of the hour and then there's one at 15 minutes after 30 minutes after and 45 minutes after the hour and it's pretty amazing i want to play this for you because it is really something so this is the first one it's so real looking you have to imagine this is four stories high. <laughs> that was one. Here is a second one. This one is really amazing. Look. Love it. Okay, here is the third one. Thank you. 
And here's a fourth. I forgot there were four. I thought there was just three. This is the cat talk. This is funny. <laughs> funny stuff, right? Funny, 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 funny funny. I like it. All right, everybody. Yes, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.